Hawaii is a tropical paradise, a land blessed with spectacular beauty and the spirit of aloha. Dana Ireland was smart, fit, and full of life. She loved the big island of Hawaii. On Christmas Eve 1991, Dana's life was stolen. She was deliberately run over while riding her bicycle, sexually assaulted, dumped into the bushes, and left to die. A local man confessed to the murder and said two brothers helped him. The man recanted his confession, but no one believed him. He's like the start of Boy Who Cried Wolf. Once he started telling the truth, nobody gonna listen. Crime scene DNA did not match any of the three men, but all three were convicted anyway. It raises questions. Are the three convicted men innocent scapegoats? Why aren't the police pursuing the man who left his male DNA on Dana Ireland? Why was exonerating new DNA evidence locked up by court order and not given to the convicted men? In both the Frank Pauline trial and the Albert Ian Schweitzer trial, the prosecutor closed with a powerful argument. Frank Pauline left his t-shirt at crime scene two, drenched in Dana's blood. It proved Frank's original confession was true. In episode nine, we'll see how a 2007 DNA test of the t-shirt proves that it had not been worn by Frank Pauline, Albert Ian Schweitzer, or Sean Schweitzer. It looks like the t-shirt was worn by the man who left his sperm. Over the years, DNA technology advanced. Soon it was possible to get DNA profiles from what was called touch DNA. In 2007, crime scene evidence, including the bloody t-shirt, was sent to Reliagene Laboratory in New Orleans for DNA testing. The results of the 2007 t-shirt test were jaw-dropping. The results show the man who wore the t-shirt was not Frank Pauline, nor either Schweitzer brother. And, as you might suspect, the man who wore the blue t-shirt was the same man who left the sperm on Dana Ireland. Before we delve into the 2007 touch DNA test of the t-shirt, let's review the DNA evidence from the 1999 DNA tests. Lisa M. Calandro, the court-approved DNA expert, testified to both the Pauline and Schweitzer juries that the blood on the blue Jimmy Z t-shirt belonged to Dana Ireland. In the January 25, 1999 DNA test report, forensic scientist Lisa Calandro was able to report a full nine marker DNA profile of the donor of the spermatozoa from the vaginal swab and exam sheet stains. This is important. As of January 1999, law enforcement had a full DNA profile of the man who left his sperm. Presumably, this was the profile of Dana Ireland's killer, or at least one of her killers. Also, the report concluded that F. Pauline, A. Schweitzer, S. Schweitzer, and four other men are all eliminated as the source of the DNA obtained from sperm fractions of the vaginal swabs and the stains from the exam sheet. Conclusively, the January 1999 DNA report eliminated Frank Pauline, Albert Ian Schweitzer, and Sean Schweitzer as the donor of the sperm. Let's fast forward to 2007. What you're looking at is a court minutes list of a sealed file. The case is captioned as, In the Matter of Albert Ian Schweitzer, and it was opened on February 26, 2007. 
Hawaii Innocence Project, also known as HIP, in 2007, represents Albert Ian Schweitzer. HIP is led by University of Hawaii law professor Virginia Hench, and one of the attorneys for HIP is Brooke Hart. The first document listed is Stipulation Ray Evidence to be submitted to Reliagene Technologies for testing and order sealing stipulation sealed in a locked cabinet. It appears that the Hawaii County Prosecutor and Honolulu HIP Attorney Brookhart, representing Albert Ian Schweitzer, are agreeing that certain pieces of evidence should be sent to Reliagene Technologies for DNA testing. What is unclear is why the file is sealed. The second document listed is another stipulation. Stipulation means agreement. This one appears to keep the post-conviction DNA testing results of evidence in a sealed file. The second document was filed on February 9, 2009. There is no indication that the Hawaii County Prosecutor or Hawaii Innocence Project are informing Albert Ian Schweitzer's co-defendant, Frank Pauline, or his attorney of the results of the 2007 DNA testing at Reliagene Technologies. In fact, we will learn that the 2007 Reliagene testing of evidence was never produced to Frank Pauline. This decision to not inform co-defendant Frank Pauline of the 2007 DNA testing will, unfortunately, prove to be calamitous. Judges for Justice believes that one of the documents in the sealed file is a Reliagene Laboratory report of December 21, 2007. This 2007 report was included as part of a court filing in 2017 regarding a petition filed by Albert Ian Schweitzer. This is page one of the six-page report. You are looking at a much copied grainy page one of the report. The report is addressed to the director of the Hawaii Innocence Project in 2007, law professor Virginia Hench. The Reliagene report is copied to the Hawaii County Prosecutor Charlene Iboshi. Ms. Iboshi was one of the prosecutors that prosecuted Frank Pauline, Albert Ian Schweitzer, and Sean Schweitzer seven years earlier. The report is dated December 21, 2007. One of the items of evidence that the laboratory analyzed was a large blue Jimmy Z t-shirt. Towards the bottom of page one, the laboratory states its conclusions. The report has 14 conclusions. Page 2 of the report has conclusions 3 through 11. Let's discuss conclusions number 8 and number 10. DNA testing of a blue Jimmy Z t-shirt armpit and blood stain. Page 2 notes that they had previously reported on July 31, 2007, the following. Conclusion number eight addresses the DNA test results of a cutting from the armpit of the blue Jimmy Z t-shirt. It states that the DNA contained in the armpit cutting is consistent with a mixture of at least two DNA donors, at least one of which is a male. Presumably, the male contributor to the armpit DNA mixture wore the blue Jimmy Z t-shirt. The Reliagene report notes that they had previously reported on August 30, 2007, DNA test results concerning the cutting from a bloodstain present on the blue Jimmy Z t-shirt. The lab report notes 
that the bloodstain cutting DNA is consistent with a single female donor. In the 1999 trial of Frank Pauline and the 2000 trial of Albert Ian Schweitzer, forensic scientist and DNA expert Lisa Calandro testified the blood on the Jimmy Z t-shirt was consistent with Dana Ireland's DNA profile. The lab reports that bloodstained DNA is consistent with one of the two donors in the previously tested armpit cutting from the t-shirt. Interpretation. The bloodstained DNA and the DNA of the female contributor to the armpit are consistent. They have the same source. Here, briefly, is page 4 of the Reliagene 2007 DNA report, which includes a column with the DNA profiles of at least two individuals one male, one female, from the armpit cutting of the blue Jimmy Z t-shirt. Back to conclusion 10 again. The lab states that the bloodstained donor is not excluded as one of the donors in the mixture obtained from the armpit. The bloodstained donor, per the 1999 trial testimony of DNA expert Lisa Calandro is Dana Ireland. The lab is telling us that Dana Ireland's DNA profile is one of the two profiles in the armpit. The last sentence from conclusion 10 in this 2007 report suggests a significant action to take. It states that if you subtract the female bloodstain DNA from the armpit DNA mixture, you will have a resultant male DNA profile that is suitable to upload into the CODIS system. CODIS stands for Combined DNA Information System. It is an FBI maintained database with millions of DNA profiles of convicted felons that have been uploaded from state and federal law enforcement agencies. The CODIS database was started in 2002. It was not available in 1999 for the upload of the spermatozoa DNA in the Dana Ireland case. In the last sentence of conclusion 10, the laboratory is telling us at least two important things. One, if you subtract Dana Ireland's DNA profile from the armpit mixture, you will have a DNA profile of the man who wore the t-shirt, a profile of the killer, or at least one of the killers. And if you upload this resultant profile, you may get a hit in the CODIS system and find the perpetrator. Two, you can also compare the armpit profile to reference samples, meaning that you can compare the armpit t-shirt male profile with samples from Frank Pauline, Albert Ian Schweitzer, and other profiles of suspects. Because it is a sealed file locked in a Hilo courthouse filing cabinet, we do not know if the subtraction of Dana Ireland's profile from the mixture in the armpit was accomplished or compared with reference samples or put into the CODIS system. Logically, that would have been the next steps taken. On page 5 of the Reliagene Laboratory report is the DNA profile from the blood stain on the t-shirt. This is Dana Ireland's profile. According to conclusion 10, if we subtract this female profile from the armpit mixture, we will obtain the profile of the man who wore the t-shirt. Will the resultant profile match Frank Pauline or either Schweitzer brother? This is table one. Judges for Justice thanks Aaron Bernstein of Simple Concepts for these graphics. The numbers down the left hand side, one through nine, are Judges for Justice numbering of the nine genetic loci 
common to both the 1999 and the 2007 DNA tests. The column on the left is the genetic loci, or the location on the gene, the markers making up the DNA profile. The 2007 Reliagene charts have 15 markers, but we are only using nine of them here because eventually we are going to compare these with the same nine markers in the January 25, 1999 Lisa Calandro DNA report. The column under Roman numeral 1 shows the alleles at each marker from the cutting of the t-shirt armpit. It is a mixture profile of two individuals, one male, one female. The column under Roman numeral 2 shows the alleles at each marker from the cutting of the blood stain on the t-shirt. Remember, in both the 1999 trial of Frank Pauline and the 2000 trial of Albert Ian Schweitzer, the court-approved DNA expert Lisa Calandro testified the blood on the t-shirt belonged to Dana Ireland. Therefore, we can conclude that column 2 is the 9-marker DNA profile of Dana Ireland. This is table 2. It is similar to table 1, but we have added a column under Roman numeral 3. Also, the column under Roman numeral 1 now has the bloodstained DNA alleles in column 2 subtracted by crossing them out with a red line. The column under Roman numeral 3 is the resultant DNA profile after you subtract the column 2 female bloodstain alleles from the mixed alleles in the column 1 t-shirt armpit profile. The column under Roman numeral 3 should be the profile of the man who wore the bloody t-shirt. The prosecution in both the Frank Pauline trial and Albert E. and Schweitzer trial presented evidence that Frank Pauline had worn the bloody t-shirt. So, column 3 should be the 9 marker DNA profile of Frank Pauline. But it is not Frank Pauline's profile. This is table 3. It is the same as table 2, but we added a column under Roman numeral 4. Column 4 has the January 25, 1999 Lisa Calandro reports 9 marker profile of the donor of the sperm. This DNA profile was taken from the sperm found in Dana Ireland's vaginal swabs and her gurney exam sheet. Here's the January 1999 Calandro DNA report that gives the nine marker DNA profile of the sperm donor and notes the three defendants, F. Pauline, A. Schweitzer, S. Schweitzer, are all eliminated as the source of the DNA from the sperm fractions of the vaginal swabs and the stains from the exam sheet. In table 3, Roman numeral column 3, we have the profile of the man who wore the Jimmy Z blue t-shirt covered in Dana Ireland's blood found at crime scene 2. In column 4, we have the DNA profile of the man who left the sperm in Dana Ireland's vaginal swabs and on her gurney sheet. The man who wore the t-shirt appears to be the same man who left the sperm. And we know from the 1999 DNA report that the three convicted men, Pauline and the two Schweitzer brothers, were eliminated as the source of the sperm DNA. Therefore, we can eliminate all three of the convicted men as being the man who wore the bloody t-shirt. Our analysis is confirmed by a DNA expert. In a 2018 court pleading, an expert stated the donor of the sperm and the wearer of the t-shirt are one and the same. They are the same man. DNA expert David Hamer, PhD, professor at the 
Department of Cell and Molecular Biology, University of Hawaii, John A. Burns School of Medicine, has confirmed that the man who wore the t-shirt soaked in Dana Ireland's blood is the same man who left his sperm. I was in shock. And why were you in shock? Because that's the first time I found out that he was a suspect for this case. What does this mean? Science has turned the convictions upside down. Frank Pauline did not wear the blue Jimmy Z t-shirt found next to Dana Ireland. Because it was not Frank Pauline who wore the t-shirt, it means that the decisive evidence against Frank Pauline and Albert Ian Schweitzer was false. This ends episode 9. In the year 2007, DNA science proved the t-shirt drenched in Dana Ireland's blood didn't belong to any of the three defendants. In episode 10, we'll discuss the implications that follow from this new evidence.